What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It is your girl, Day of Day to Day TV, and today I am switching up just a little bit. I know that when you guys normally see these chairs, I'm normally doing the black on spotlight show, and in a way, I am still doing the black on spotlight show. But today, I'm really just gonna be sitting down and talking to an artist that I have come to really enjoy, Mr. Shake Life Shoddy. Mr. Strip Club Extraordinaire, Strip Club Junkie, Mr. Wide Up. Oh boy. Oh boy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just busy working. Busy Moving working. And shaking and trying to stay out the way. That that has been my theme of the end of 2020 is out. I literally out just I just uploaded the picture said out the way. Out the way. Just stay out the way. That's it. What does staying out the way mean to you? I, I mean you stay out the way means just staying out the way. You only see me when it's time for Mr. Wilder to be out. Yeah. I just don't just like be out, be out. Like I got my spots I go to, mm -hmm. hang out, but I don't just be like every concert that go to the city I gotta go to. I stay out the way. Uh, stay out the way and stay in your bag. Way. Yep, stay in that bag. <laughs> We're actually gonna just take it back just a little bit because I always like to start my interviews with the beginning, how people started, got their start. So I did my research on you. You have been playing instruments for how long? Uh, I started in third grade. In the third grade. What yeah. was your first instrument? First instrument, alto sax. Really? Do you still play? I think I could if I got back on it. Cause like I played, like I learned, I've really been doing like instruments since like early, early. You know, everybody learned how to play the recorder. Mm -hmm. I learned how to play the violin. But then I, I stopped, That's stopped different. doing, uh, switching schools. Then I got in the third grade. I tried to play drums. My grandmother had got me a drum, uh, snap drum, but yeah. it didn't work out. So we took the snap drum back and I got the alto saxophone. <laughs> That so, worked out a little bit better for worked you? Worked out a little bit better. So from third grade all the way up to like first semester senior year, I was on alto sax and I switched over to baritone. Who introduced instruments to you? You just like, I want to play instruments? Really? I just wanted to, I wanted to do something. Like when I was in third grade, they had a band. So I was like, man, I'm going to get in the band. Because uh, I went to I went to Rose right here up the street. Mm -hmm. So I got in the band and just started learning how to play saxophone. Okay, and speaking of up the street, he just said that nobody knows where we are right now. We are at the Black Store. This uh, this video is actually sponsored by the Black Store. But yes, come visit them, little plug. Anyways. <laughs> gotta slide that in there. Yeah, gotta slide, that's your love. I gotta slide that in. Gotta slide it in. But anyways, back to, you know, you doing music and starting in the third grade, what was the inspiration behind, like, you know, you just wanted to, wanted to do music? Was it, you know, you had the instruments and it was like... I mean, because I, I, I had already been into music, you know, so I, like, I, uh, all my people, I was raised on music, you know, mm -hmm. but I figured that when I got an uh, instrument, it would, because I wasn't playing sports. Yeah. I wasn't doing no sports. I had to find something. I was like, man, I'm little. <laughs> Everybody wanted me to play, but I played basketball in the neighborhood, but I wanted to do music because I like music. I said, let me try to play an instrument. Yeah. And so, like, getting in the band in third grade, they was the ones, like, you can play the drums. I was like, y'all want to play the drums? Yeah. And the drums didn't work out because when I be at home and I'm playing on the snare drum, my like, grandma like, shut up. I like that. <laughs> I was like, well, let me try something else. You need to play the saxophone. I don't care. I play the saxophone. So that, that's the, those are the only two instruments? Uh, other than a little bit of violin. Piano? I play a little piano. Okay. You know, but you know, I try to learn everything. Like, I, play, I can play, since I play baritone, I can play trombone. You know, so I know how to play soprano sax a tad, but I'm better on alto. Okay. So what came first? You, um, you rapping or you DJing? Me rapping. Really? I was an artist before I was a DJ. Do a lot of people know that? Some people that just now caught on to me, they just think I was a, I'm a DJ that started rapping, but the people that know yeah. me know me know like, nah, he's been rapping for a minute, so. You have been a, a long minute. I actually was introduced to you as a DJ. I don't know what I was on on Instagram. It was like a BRS cash. He was doing a drop and then you were doing a drop. It was like DJ Young Savage was in it. And oh yeah, was, that's when Cash came to the time for, uh, we had a listening party. Yeah. Mean, yeah, so you introduced yourself as a DJ and then I went to your page and I was like, oh, he's a rapper. Like, <laughs> Cause we was, there, we was with all the DJs. So when I be with all the DJs, I'm in DJ mode. Yeah. So then you hear me say, go DJ Mr. Wide Up, because mm -hmm. I'm with all of the DJs. But if I'm not with a bunch of DJs, then I'm just Mr. Wide Up, because then I'm in artist mode. Yeah. So that'd be the that'd be the good part. Yeah. Balance both. 
Which one do you enjoy more? I love both. Like, at first it was more, I like doing rapping and DJing was just, let's make some money. Mm -hmm. But now I done built my name up so much as a DJ. Like, I'm loving that right now, cause like, I was like, I, uh, I've been on the Clubhouse app. So I was in the room with a bunch of DJs, with a bunch of DJs. Mm -hmm. All the big name DJs. Every time they got in there, somebody saw my name. Why the what's up? So every DJ from not even from just Texas, I'm talking about Memphis, Atlanta, everybody know who I am. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So people know me off of this, off of my DJ. Cool. Not tripping. Then yeah. they get the music. Then they like, oh you an artist too? Yeah. So the support even more when they find that out. Okay. So I also saw that, well. It seems like a lot of your music is strip club inspired. A lot of shake, shake. Yeah, I can't say that on camera, but you know what I mean. <laughs> shake your butt. <laughs> shake your booty. Shake your booty. <laughs> uh, so is that what Shake Life Shawty comes from? No, Shake Life. Um, shake Life Shawty is actually my name. It's a, it's a, it's a term we use in the strip club called Shake Life. Mm -hmm. So you know, girl shaking. It's the life, the life, it's, it's the nightlife. Mm -hmm. I got the name actually from Tammy the Tiger. I um, was I was working at a, a club called Fetish and I was trying to put my mixtape together. Yeah. You know, and I still got, I still got a bit of an accent from Atlanta. So it's like, man, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. So then she was like, why don't you call it Shake Life Shout? Yeah. So I was like, Shake Life Shout? Like, all right. So that was when I was doing DJing. So I did a song uh, it was me, Cheryl, my dog Cheryl, and a uh, fat pimp. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl was actually the one said, at the end of your verse, why don't you say Shay Glide, Shawty? Sh and I was like, so I did it and it just kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So I just kept the name running. So like, you know, you hear me, you know, everybody on the song, they hear me say Shay Glide, Shawty. So it's just like, it just kind of stuck then. It does stick. It's a, it's a nice little, it rolls off the tongue too. So. so. So you got shorts that say Shake Life Shawty on because I saw the... We, uh, yeah, we got we to gotta order some more. We're getting a whole... We, we the trying junkie to get shorts. Together. Yeah, the junkie <laughs> shorts. Yeah, we're finna get all the merch back together. The, the, I'm going to bring back the strip club junkie shorts, the Shake Life Shawty shorts, all that. So we already getting the, the Keep Going merch. We're getting all that together. So we can uh, put the push on, on the new record. So Okay. So with, you know... Uh, going off of the strip club, how do you think that has, that's been instrumental in your career as an uh, recording artist? Because it's like, cause first off, I get all my inspiration comes from strip club. Second of all, I can break my music in the strip club. Yeah. So you know, if you if you get if you get strippers on your records, dancers on your records first, it trickles down to everybody that don't go to the strip club. Mm -hmm. Cause then you might be a dancer and you with somebody that never been to the strip club. And you get in the car with like, and you and she playing the song that she hear at work, and somebody say, "Who is that?" Oh, that's Mr. Wide Up, girl. Yeah. Oh, I need that song, and it just move, it just move from move from people. Yeah. So. Do you think that the, the strip club is a good way, a uh, good place to test out new music? Yes, it is. It is. Would they tell you if, if it's you not get, it? Yeah, because if you can get if you can get a stripper to dance to your music, you can get a regular woman to dance. To your <laughs> Every regular woman has a stripper in them somewhere. It, it, it come out it when it, it come out when it come out. <laughs> but when it come out, it come out. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. So, what do you do? You think that your music is always going to be inspired by the strip club, or is there another side you haven't shown us yet? I mean, because a lot of my a lot of my music, like even on the projects, I try to show different sides. Mm -hmm. But like the main music you hear is like me, mostly strip clubs. Yeah. You know? So it's just. I mean, even when I do other records with people. You know, I still, I still know how to switch it up. Yeah. You know, so but a lot of people call me for club records. But yeah. so when you do a club record, I'ma do a, you gonna get a strip club verse. So <laughs> that's 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 how it goes. I mean, I can change it up. You know, that's why I said I like to uh, when I get a little more further, I start working with bigger artists. I want to challenge myself by doing different records. They don't technically have to be club records, but. If I gotta do a, a techno record, that's gonna be a challenge for me. Like, oh, I ain't never did the techno record. Yeah, and I gotta get on that. So, yeah, so it's gonna show. It's gonna show the growth once I start doing uh, different types of records. Yeah. Okay. So piggybacking off of when you work with bigger artists, because I do believe that's coming for you, especially after hearing "Keep Going." We're gonna talk about that soon. But who are who is your dream collab? Dream collab. Ti and Jill Scott. T.I. and Jill Scott. That's the second interview that somebody said Jill Scott. Why Jill Scott? I'm a Jill. I'm a Jill Scott fan. Like 
I listen to Jill Scott. I listen to a lot of Jill Scott. I can see you rapping on a strip club record and Jill Scott just being in the background, just like harmonizing. That's what I'm saying. Like I got, I, I, that's that's one of the things I said I'm gonna do. I gotta go big. Like I want, I, if I need Jill Scott record. Yeah. If I get Jill Scott, if I get ever get in the studio with Jill Scott, then I'm good. I feel like she would do it too. She seems very cool. People, very people down to gravitate because when they find out I work in the strip club, then they gravitate. Oh, he need to do a strip club record. Everybody want to do it. I mean, yeah, but. Cause some people never been into a strip club. Yeah. They never had a. They thinking people not playing their songs at the strip club. Mm -hmm. But I play everything. It might be a party. It might like towards the end of the night. I start doing like an R and B mix. So mm -hmm. you hear a bunch of R and B in the club in the strip club. Mm -hmm. You know, so people don't think you can play R and B. I play R and B all the time. I I love R and B. I think R and B can be played in any setting. It can. Strip club included. Yep. I think that's actually a great place to play it. Yep. But I do it like early. Like I play R and B early. Cause you know around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, you know you got to turn up. Then you know you got certain songs that's out now that's more. It's not too R and B ish, but mm -hmm. it's R and B ish that you can play and people know the you know know the song. Yeah. So. so in doing my research on you, I seen that you 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 said you've been around since two been doing music since 2003, right? Mm -hmm. And it's now 2020. I didn't start seeing things on Instagram until 2015. But even in that, it's but that's five years. Yeah. How do you stay motivated to keep doing this? Uh, just it's just the passion. Like I love music. Like you know, and, and I just I just know that I got to keep going. Like you know, that's where the whole idea from keep going came from. You know, at one point I wanted to stop doing it. Like recently, like a couple months ago, I was like, man, I don't want to do this no more. Like it ain't working. Yeah. I'm just spinning my wheels. Let me just focus on being a DJ. This music ain't working for no. me. So then you know I had all my people. Uh, my people, I hear my people telling me, oh, keep going, your time coming, like, keep going, keep going. So, that's what gave me the motivation to make, keep going, like, that's why I say it's, it's a, a motivational song. So, like, you know, I tell everybody, like, I do, I do, I did the song because I was telling myself to keep going. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're here, and you're here, like, newer songs, like, a couple new songs that's coming out, you'll hear me say, keep going, going into the second verse. Mm -hmm. So, you'll hear me saying, keep going, but I tell everybody, that it's like, it's motivation, like, tell yourself, keep going, don't ever quit what you're doing. Yeah. Like, if, if it get hard, just think about it and keep going. Don't stop, just keep going. Yeah, no, you put, a, and you have a lot of motivational uh, things on your page. I forgot the guy's name, the funny guy that's like, you are so beautiful. Oh, hot spot. Yeah, so you you look to him for motivation? Well, every, <laughs> every morning, it's like, you know, I, I have been following hot spot, so it's just like every morning, you know, and some of the videos are older videos. I know his page, so I, I was I used to post them before. But yeah, he 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 give you a, a good morning feel. Like mm -hmm. wake up, good morning. And yes. you, all you can do is smile after you, when you look at it. All you can do is smile. Be like man, let me get up. He's making me laugh this morning. So you know, like morning. That's why I put stuff like that in the morning. People are like, boy, you stupid. Like, but I bet you were smiling. He told you to smile. So what is a day? What is a day in the life of? Mr. Wide Up. Day of life. From the night before, get up. I might get up. Play I play Call of Duty. I'm a I'm a gamer. Don't fall, don't fall I get up. Then I uh then I have I, I do a writing session with myself. Okay. And it'd be like about three hours. But I do it like twice a day. And I write. And I just write. Just randomly write. So do that if I gotta go to work. You know, I work at uh Onyx. I work at D Bar, I work at Boulevard, I work at B Line. Mm -hmm. So like Onyx, I gotta be on Onyx at seven o'clock. So we open at seven. So I have to prepare myself to get ready to leave my house about six thirty. Mm -hmm. Get to Onyx at seven. DJ all the way till four in the morning. We close, get out, get out of Onyx by five thirty. Get home, try to go to sleep because I'm a night owl. Yeah. So I'll be up till about ten in the morning. Then I'll fall asleep to get back <laughs> up, do all this over again unless I'm either out of town. Or you know I don't have nothing to do. That is an exciting life. So no, no two days are really the same for you. No. no so two. I did see that you do tip out confessions. Is that still a thing? Yes, it's still it's still a thing. I'm really I'm really working on um, trying to get the YouTube channel up. So I, I think that that would be a great podcast. I, but I wanted, but see, they, everybody wants me to do it. I'm like, I'm thinking about just going ahead and doing it and just doing the tip out confessions podcast. And just uploading it every yeah. week and doing it every week. So I'm 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 really I'm really 
I've been contemplating on that, even though the music picking up. I think I can pick a day out and just do the podcast and yeah. do the Tupac Fishers podcast. Yeah, and then you can. Would you would you only talk to um, would you only talk to strippers or no, I want to bring, bring different people in because then I want to know like you know it's gonna be talks about the strip club, so we're gonna be talking about the strip club. So you, like you know you got you got yeah the business. You know I might bring somebody in that do you know artists like you know. What was your first business at the strip club? I, you know, talk, mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know, and that's how I want to do it. Because everybody been to a strip club, if you haven't been, you want to know about it, then, you know, you'll learn about it. Yeah. So, I wouldn't make it like the show, because the show is just my POV. I think that would be, I, I mean, I watched a couple a couple episodes, and I, th- I thought it was, I thought I liked it. It's real. I truly do enjoy the strip club. I don't go to the strip club a lot, but when I go, I do enjoy myself. So it would be nice to hear, you know, the business side of the strip club, um, things from the girls' point of view, things that you just don't know what's going on when you're just in there having a good time. Yeah. Even like the before, like getting ready to perform and things like that. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I hope See, you make that something. I'm, I think I'm, I think that's gonna be one of the things I do for 2021 and do the Tip Like Confession podcast. Yeah. And do that. Make that, make that, make that happen. And then bring me on. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about, but. <laughs> we're gonna get you on there. We're gonna get you on, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get you on there and I'm gonna bring a stripper in so y'all can just talk. It's like, girl, yeah, we can do it. I could really ask strippers some questions. I, I'm always intrigued by their lifestyle. Just, I think they're some of the strongest women in the world. So, Trust me. have a lot of respect for them. Um, so, let's talk about keep going plans for 2021 how what are you manifesting for 2021 I'm manifesting and i'm trying to be one of the biggest artists for 2021 not just not just in texas like, i'll be from texas but i want i want my name known with everybody mm-hmm. 2021 like i'm trying to i'm trying to turn up I'm trying to turn all the way up uh you know the city cool it's not you know we got a branch out you know, the goal is to get out. You know, you're not finna, you don't want to make it. Yeah. I want to made it, not make it, I want to made it. Okay. So like the goal, you know, I, I really want to be one of the biggest artists. Keep going, gonna be the first record. But I have at least another four or five records coming back behind that one. Unless I'm also working on my first album. So okay. I'm working on the album in the midst of everything right now. So keep going is gonna be the, the kickoff to the album. Okay. So. So, all strip club inspired. Are you gonna have any slow jams on there? Of course. Yeah. Well, I have to have okay. slow jams. Okay. I have to. With how far you've come and where you see yourself going, what motivation, what what can you say to motivate somebody to keep going? Because, actually, before you say that, I asked you how old you were. Are you comfortable saying how old you are on camera? Yeah, comfortable. How old are you? 36. Okay, so you've been doing this since 2003. I'm not good at math. But that's a long, long time. People, a lot of my homeboys be like, man, you an OG now. You are. <laughs> I was like, man, look. You are. Cause my mom, my, my, my mom and my dad, they don't look that age. My dad like 6'2", my mama like five foot. Mm-hmm. Now one of them look like they look. They look younger? Yep. You look, I would've gave you 31. I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'm 25 in, in the world. In the world, I'm 25. Have you always had a deep voice? Nah. No? Nah. I think my voice kind of changed because sometimes my voice higher. But I think because I, when I do certain songs, mm-hmm. I change my voice. So now my voice naturally sounds like this now. So Honestly, your voice is really what made me like tune into the video. Like, who is that? Because you don't sound like everybody else just talking. You know, some people rap and they try to sound different. You already sound different just talking. So, But I had to... I had to Change everything. I, I had to find something that fit me. So like, I always change my voice when I rap. But now it's like now when I rap, it's like it's a certain pattern. Like mm-hmm. it'll start out. Yeah. I had to find and I had to make me a sound, which is good because now I got a sound. You definitely do. So it's like everybody want that sound when I do a record, or that sound when I do a hook, or that sound when I do a verse. So it's like, well, I got a sound now, so. That that's the key to a lot of a lot of people don't have. They still trying to find that sound. So it's good that you found yours. But okay, let's go back to the motivation. What would you say to somebody that's been grinding 
thinking about quitting, especially in music, because I know there's a lot of independent artists, I know there's a lot of people that's trying to do the same thing. What do you say to those people that just want to quit? Man, you got to push through. Like, if this is what you want to do, you know, a lot of people don't understand, like, people like myself and other artists, we, we lost a lot of things chasing this music. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lost jobs, relationships, I didn't homeless, like, just because I love this music. You know, and it's just like, if you can't, if you can't push through it, then, you know, yeah, I wanted to quit, but I was still doing something I love with the DJing. I still was with music, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, if you, when you chasing a dream, like, you're going to have setbacks. Everybody, everybody have setbacks on a dream. Yeah. It's a dream till you get to it. Yeah. You know, so, but once you get to it or you get to a, a point where you right there, you can't stop. Like, when people, when you run in the race. Right there when you finna cross that finish line, you're like, yeah, I gotta keep going, keep going. Then you just stop, like, oh, I ain't gonna make it, I'm too tired. Yeah, and it's, it's like it's right, right there. there. <laughs> so just keep, just push through it and just go go for what you know. That's, that's crazy. So you you were homeless. How long was that? How long were you homeless for? It was a minute and I was still, nobody knew. Because I still went, I still went out and I went, I was doing my music, I was still pushing records, I was, but, I, but nobody never knew. So when you say homeless, you you mean like sleeping in your car, right? Or something nah, like I stay with I stay with like my homeboys. Like I used to go to my home. I went to my a lot homeboys. Of homeless people there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, I stay with my homeboys. Like I didn't have nothing. Like I probably had like two or three pair of pants, two pair of shoes, and about three shirts. And you was making it work. Making it work every time. Does that make you appreciate where you are now more so? I'm, I'm sure. But like I said, nobody knew. Like I was still alive. Like it's videos. His video, like the video, it's on YouTube. I performed at Hollow Middle School. Mm -hmm. I was homeless, but you never know. I came in, I had my chain on, everything, but I was like, I had nothing. Fake it till you make it. Yes, hey. That's real. I did it. That is real, <laughs> and I'm starting to understand it more doing what I'm doing because there's times where I'm like. This ain't for me, this ain't for or me. Yeah, just man. things are not going my way. You already started, way. you know, you don't, you don't want to start something, get in too deep, and be like, this not, I don't want to do this. And then just quit, because then after that, you're going to quit everything you do. And you don't want to be known as a You don't want to be as a quitter. Like, what happened to your store? Oh, man, it got hard, so I shut the store down. So what you doing now? Yeah, man, I got a boutique at the mall. <laughs> what, what happened to your boutique? Man, they wanted me to pay rent. I wasn't trying to pay rent. What you doing now? Man, I'm driving trucks. <laughs> man, what you doing now? Man, I stopped driving them trucks, bro. They wanted me to go all out of town every day. I ain't feel like driving. You know what I'm saying? You gonna quit, everything's gonna be an excuse every time it don't work. Yeah, and it's like, imagine if you would've just stuck with that stuck one with thing. Stuck with that one thing all the way through and built yourself up to where you made to what you needed to do. Well, I want to thank you so much. You have really given me a lot of inspiration today to keep doing what I'm doing. I think I'm be a motivational speaker. I think you should. <laughs> TED Talk. <laughs> Tip Out Confessions TED Talk Edition. Yep. I mean, <laughs> TED Talk Tip Out Confessions Edition. <laughs> Go ahead, give y'all some motivation every day. But I want to thank you so much, Mr. Wider. Thank you for having me. Please go ahead and tell the people where they can find you. Uh, follow me at Mr. Wider for boy. Follow Mr. Wider Music also. Um, I'm active on my Twitter, Mr. Wider for boy. Um, my, subscribe to the YouTube channel. New videos are on the way. Make sure y'all go check out the Pop My Shit video and the Do It video Here featuring old TB Fast Lane. Hey. Um, hey. Keep going, drop January 1st, 2021, man. I always remember keep going, man. So when it drop, y'all go download it and stream it right now. Use that hashtag, keep going, man. Remember, keep going. The app is on the way, too, so y'all get ready. Ladies, I really think y'all are gonna enjoy this Keep Going record, so I wanna push that one more time, cause I heard it last night and I was in my room like, hey! Y'all hey. keep going, man, <laughs> y'all keep going. But you guys can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at day.todaytv. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's day2daytv, no dot, just day2daytv. And it's raining outside, so we're about to uh -oh. head inside. Uh -oh. Thank you guys so much! <laughs> You just hopped in the whip, about to pick up your pick up your Oh, you ain't know she was all of my.